Good morning, everyone. Warren County Fiscal Court is now called to order Thursday, March 28th, 2024. We appreciate everyone being here today. Uh, today, we're going to start off with an invocation from Dr. Alex Watkins. He's a minister of adult discipleship at First Baptist Church. And following that, we'll have a pledge to the flag uh, by Esquire Tom Lawrence. Dr. Scott Watkins. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for the gift of today. Uh, we thank you for granting us life to be in these chambers this morning. As we think about the events that took place uh, this week, over 2,000 years ago, we thank you for what Jesus alone has accomplished. We thank you that he's made a way uh, for us to be able to, to speak with you, to commune with you today. We thank you that he's conquered sin, defeated death in the grave, and crushed the enemy once for all. We thank you that he lives and that he will return one day. Father, your word describes how, we, uh, how you have set up rulers and authorities over your people for their good. Your word describes and articulates how we should pray for these people that you have ordained to lead us. So today, Father, we pray for the physical court of Warren County. We pray that you would grant them great wisdom and great discernment. We pray that you would supply them with the knowledge they need to lead and to govern our community well. Father, we pray that they would seek your face and lead us for the glory of Jesus' name among all people in Warren County. We trust that you will lead and guide the physical court of Warren County for the glory of Christ. And we pray in the only name that we can. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Please face the flag repeat after me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Dr. Watkins. Perfect. Good seeing you again. Happy Easter to you. All right. Clerk, please call the roll. Esquire McWhorter. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Lawrence. Here. Esquire Aldridge. Here. Esquire Lasley. Yes. Esquire Cummings. Here. Esquire Williams. Here. <clears throat> All right, first items approve the minutes of the fiscal court meeting on March 14th, 2024. <clears throat> Motion by Squire Lawrence, second by Squire Lasley. Any corrections? Oh, please call the roll. Esquire McWhorter. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Lawrence. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Aldridge. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Lasley. Yes. Esquire Cummings. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Williams. Yes. Next item approve the work schedule for the Warren County Road Department. Motion by Squire McWhorter, second by Squire Aldridge. <coughs> Discussion or questions? Please call the roll. Esquire McWhorter. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Lawrence. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Aldridge. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Lasley. Yes. Esquire Cummings. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Williams. Yes. All right, we'll take a break for a second. We got a special presentation from Emily Hathcock, our good friend from Brad, and she's going to talk to us about a said summit they have coming up, but also pretty interesting uh, and a great opportunity for us for our senior kitchen uh, request. So, Emily, good to see you. Thank you. Good morning. Um, at your tables, you should have a handout um, about our upcoming training. It is a SED Summit. You may recall about a year ago, Brad had kind of a larger SED Summit uh, at the end of January in Cave City at the Convention Center. We are doing a smaller version of that this year. Um, it has been approved for two and a half hours of DLG credit. It is a free training. We hope that you will join us. Um, there is a QR code on the bottom of that handout to register. That just helps us get a lunch count. Um, there are going to be several topics of interest at this. We'll do a session of breakouts and then a regional panel that's going to be um, <coughs> the opioid response in the region is going to be our panel and then another session of breakouts in the afternoon. Topics include things like housing, uh, recreational project focus, uh, green infrastructure, planning and development, various things like that. Um, there is an exp expanded agenda on the website for this event that's also linked um, on your handout. So any questions on that? I do hope you can join us April the 9th, 10.30 to 2, Cave City Convention Center. Fantastic, okay. Emily. Perfect. Do you want me to talk about the next one? I, you do whatever you want to do. you got the <laughs> microphone right in front of you, so that's okay. perfect. Let me bring it up so I make sure I say it right. <clears throat> Excuse me. So Brad has the ability to leverage some state allocated ARPA dollars through our aging network programs. Um, and with your approval, we would like to propose assisting Warren County Fiscal Court with the procurement for design and cost estimates of a regional project at Ephraim, a food distrib distribution and kitchen center. Um, design and inspections could be reimbursed by Brad, ideally through this initial step and scope of work. Um, it would 
create a design and cost estimates um, that could be then used in additional grant funding for implementation, things like EDA, CDBG. Um, we do have approval from the Cabinet for Health and Family Services to allocate $80,000 of BRADS funds towards this project, um, with the county providing match up to $10,000, um, and this would be all due before September 30th of this year, 2024. Any questions about that? It's a great, great opportunity for us really to, to uh, make a, uh, I think, a generational difference uh, for the seniors in this community if we could uh, pull it off. So it'd be great. We're very excited. Any questions for Emily? Great. Thank you so very much. We appreciate you. Absolutely. All Thank right. You. Good seeing you. And that uh, said, so much a great opportunity. So we'll all take a look at that to see if we can work that out. So it's great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Is my microphone on? I don't know. Yes, I don't think well, my red light is on. Is that what? Okay. I'll speak louder. Approve the second and final reading of Orange 2412, rezoning property located in a portion of 2355 Hadley Coron Road from agriculture to residential estate containing approximately one acre and presently owned by Nicholas and Megan Anderson. Motion by Squire Aldridge, second by Squire Cummings. Discussion or questions? Please call the roll. Esquire McWhorter? Yes, ma'am. Esquire Lawrence? Yes, ma'am. Esquire Aldridge? Yes, ma'am. Esquire Lasley? Yes. Esquire Cummings? Yes, ma'am. Esquire Williams? Yes. Item 7 is approved second and final reading of Ordinance 2413, rezoning property located on the southeast side of Nashville Road, approximately 668 feet southwest of GN Glasscock Road from Agriculture to general business containing approximately five acres and presently owned by J&P Balance Farms, LLLP. Motion. <clears throat> Motion by Squire Cummings, second by Squire Aldridge. Discussion or questions? Please call the roll. Esquire McWhorter? Yes. Esquire Lawrence? Yes, ma'am. Esquire Aldridge? Yes, ma'am. Esquire Lasley? Yes. Esquire Cummings? Yes, ma'am. Esquire Williams? Yes. Item 8 is approve emergency determination in the amount of $2,959 to advance systems technology for replacement of a main control board monitor for the Warren County Regional Jail. This is paid for by the canteen account at no cost to Warren County. Motion by Squire McWhorter, second by Squire Aldridge. Discussion or questions? Please call the roll. Esquire McWhorter? Yes, Esquire Lawrence? Yes, ma'am. Esquire Aldridge? Yes, ma'am. Esquire Lasley? Yes. Esquire Cummings? Yes, ma'am. Esquire Williams? Yes. Approve a one-year renewal of medical contract with comprehensive correctional care effective July 1, 2024 in the amount of $1,611,856 for the Warren County Regional Jail. This reflects an increase in cost of $234,201 from the prior year. I'm going to go ahead and make my way up here and try to offer some explanation. Uh, we bid this, I think, the budget before last. Uh, they were significantly cheaper than the other bidders. Uh, the one that we had for 20 years, Southern Health Partners did not uh, choose to bid in the process. Um, Triple C has done an excellent job. We've got a good medical team. The problem is, it's a good problem, in our community we have excellent health care providers everywhere, both hospitals, private practices. It's hard to keep staff working in our building when they can go somewhere else and make more money. So that's part of the issue. The other thing that's new that we're still navigating, um, it's a very litigious issue, is dealing with uh, medication-assisted therapy and treatment, Suboxone and uh, Vivitrol and all of those things that are being introduced everywhere now. Um, that's now part of the Americans with Disabilities Act, so we have no option but to explore that when the inmate that comes in meets the criteria. Uh, the medical provider is willing to be the overseeing physician for that because it's a natural fit, but also they are taking on the liability for all of the administ uh, administering the program, who does and does not meet criteria, and then of course when it comes time for litigation, and it will, uh, related to this particular topic, um, we'll have that in our contract to lean on. That also costs um, money for us in this renewal. Um, their uh, malpractice insurance has almost doubled uh, since all of this has rolled out across this state. Um, so every jail um, is seeing an increase like this based on this MAT therapy. Um, so that's the, that's the reason for the increased cost. 
it's not something that you know you can tangibly hold uh, when you spend an extra couple hundred thousand but it is something that we are required to do by the ADA now and so um, this is the best option for us at this time I'll be happy to answer any questions that you are have. we gonna have to adjust your budget or is that something that's anticipated you know of course, obviously we never anticipate a two hundred thousand dollar increase no so I'm just curious that something do we need to amend your budget or is it something that's already covered with with Greg to to understand where that's coming from. So when I met with them with an increase like this, I told them it would be July 1. Our contract actually is up in April, uh, but we'll go month to month on the current contract. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the next item is the next budget. Um, so it will start July 1. Okay. And they were agreeable to that. Yeah. Any other questions? <coughs> okay. Motion by Squire Cummings, second by Squire Aldridge. <coughs> And it's a perfect example of uh, sometimes the pressures uh, of a growing community, but, uh, but I think the uh, citizenry should know $1.6 million, uh, everyone deserves care, but $1.6 million just for medical care for the inmates of the Warren County Regional Jail. Uh, so it's, an, 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 an again, a quarter million dollar increase. Uh, it's, it is a tough thing to continually uh, take care of things that we have to do but we appreciate the hard work on there unfortunately as many of us know in the insurance business we're getting limit li uh, less and less options and when there's no competition and no one wants to do it uh, I hated it, Southern Health Partners but I'm sure they made a business decision that they must not have been making money shockingly but uh, when we have limited numbers like this and limited people that can uh, that want to advertise uh, want to bid for that services we are at we talk about at the mercy this is what you're looking at right here. So I wanted to say that, but any other questions? Please call the roll. Esquire McWhorter. Yes. Esquire Lawrence. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Aldridge. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Lasley. Yes. Esquire Cummings. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Williams. Yes. All right, item 10 is approve the Warren County Regional Jail for fiscal year 2024-2025. Motion by Squire Aldridge, second by Squire McWhorter. Any questions for Stephen or Stephen, any highlights on that that you want to share? just make some brief comments uh, the number of state inmates is down across the state they're moving more people into prisons um, and there's some there's a bill still that's not dead that's hopefully we'll hear today or tomorrow that could affect uh, the state's <coughs> paying of uh, state inmates in county jails that may affect us uh, there's lots of organizations pushing that bill to the floor so if it gets there that will affect this number um, we looked at a three-year budget cycle the last three years because we had some strange years in there since COVID. Uh, and also the first six months of this particular fiscal year we're in now was not a great year as far as number of state inmates, number of federal inmates, um, facility failures. Um, we've dug up the floor in a couple of different places over plumbing problems and other things that we had to take care of, a water main leak, uh, all, all different kinds of issues. So this budget is facility issues, the increase in medical that we just um, uh, talked about and that you voted on and also the cost of living increase for the staff so qu two questions sure this is that um, number one is what is our inmate count today just curious what the uh, I didn't make it to the briefing we had an emergency this morning so I couldn't tell you uh, I'm saying probably around 680 okay. that's my guess and, so. and the second thing would be um, this bill that you're talking about is that beneficial for for us, or is it not beneficial? What's that bill number? Because I'll make a call to uh, our Senate Bill 283. Mm -hmm. It would uh, force the Department of Corrections to enter into a contract with each county um, and would require them to pay actual cost uh -huh. for a state inmate, not just the set per diem. So right now we get 3531 per state inmate per day. This would put it more to the actual cost based on a formula. Each county would be a little different. Our actual cost is somewhere around $48 and some change. And so you can see from 3531 to what an actual cost would be yeah. directly would affect the fiscal court assistance. Uh, this budget that, that I just presented to you uh, shows about 25% of our budget coming from county tax dollars. Um, if the state, if that particular bill makes it out of the Appropriations and Revenue Committee uh, to the floor for a vote, we feel like it could go through. And if it does, it will directly affect that 2.9 million that you're having to put into our $12 million budget. Mm -hmm. In a positive way. Correct, Absolutely. in a very positive way. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. good. We all should probably should encourage all of us to call. There's been a lot of that work going on. So, yeah. All right, thank yeah. you. We're hopeful. 
Yeah, definitely. If you if you uh, can reach out to your uh, to our state uh, representatives, it again made it out of committee at the Senate. It's gone over the A and R of the House, and they are uh, juggling right now. And uh, last night I was on the phone, but I'm not I'm not uh, kind of neutral. I don't know where they're going with it, but sure would be nice if they would do it. it makes a big difference again. The, the, it's a little more complicated, but the bottom line is it pays what the price is. They, they do a formula. They're not going to take our word for it, but I can tell you we're losing $15 per day per inmate, mm -hmm. our cost, uh, for that for the state. And and they're aware of it as well, which is you would think they would try to correct it, but we'll see. But if you can make a, a phone call, text message to your state represent to our state rep delegation about that, uh, it's in the A&R right now. We'll see what happens. Uh, everything's going to break loose uh, by uh, mid next week and then 15th, of course, the last day. But there's a lot of, as I say, horse trading going on right now. We'll see what happens. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> Any other questions for Jailer? Thanks. Please call the roll. Esquire McWhorter. Yes. Esquire Lawrence. Yes, Esquire Aldridge. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Lasley. Yes. Esquire Cummings. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Williams. Yes. Item 11 is approved determination the amount of $9,562.59 to Uline for 15 steel box trucks for parks and rec to use when setting up election polling locations. This is a single source vendor due to specialized dimensions needed. Motion, Motion by Squire Aldridge, second by Squire Lawrence. Discussion or questions? Please call roll. Esquire McWhorter? Yes. Esquire Lawrence? Yes, ma'am. Esquire Aldridge? Yes, ma'am. Esquire Lasley? Yes. Escar Cummings? Yes, Escar Williams? Yes. Item 12 is authorized public works to advertise for bids for cable, television, and telecommunications franchises. Motion by Squire McWhorter, second by Squire Cummings. Discussion or questions? Please call the roll. Escar McWhorter? Yes. Escar Lawrence? Yes, ma'am. Escar Aldridge? Yes, ma'am. Escar Lasley? Yes. Escar Cummings? Yes, Escar Williams? Yes. Item 13 is approved the February 2024 Treasurer's Report. Motion by Squire Lawrence, second by Squire Lasley. Discussion or questions? Please call the roll. Esquire McWhorter? Yes, Esquire Lawrence? Yes, Esquire Aldridge? Yes, ma'am. Esquire Lasley? Yes. Esquire Cummings? Yes, ma'am. Esquire Williams? Yes. Item 14 is approved determination amount of $5,046.36 to Leachman Collision Center for a pair of a 2022 Ford F-350 for Parks and Rec that was damaged by a staff member who struck a fixed object in the left rear and tailgate. Three quotes were obtained. This was the lowest and best. Motion, Motion by Squire Aldridge, second by Squire Lasley. Discussion or questions? Please call the roll. Esquire McWhorter? Yes. Esquire Lawrence? Yes, ma'am. Esquire Aldridge? Yes, ma'am. Esquire Lasley? Yes. Esquire Cummings? Yes, ma'am. Esquire Williams? Yes. Item 15 is approved res resolution 2409 authorizing the sheriff to make application for grant funds and upon approval to enter into an agreement with the Kentucky Office of Homeland Security to execute any documents which are deemed necessary by the KOHS to facilitate and administer the project and to act as the authorized correspondent for this project. Motion by Squire Alder, second by Squire McWhorter. Discussion or questions? Please call the roll. Esquire McWhorter? Yes. Esquire Lawrence? Yes, Esquire Aldridge? Yes, ma'am. Esquire Lasley? Yes. Esquire Cummings? Yes, ma'am. Esquire Williams? Yes. Item 16 is approved determination the amount of $9,081.41 to the Save Our Kids Coalition for reimbursement for ASAP coordinator. This is paid for by the ASAP grant. Motion by Squire Alder, second by Squire Lasley. Discussion or questions? Please call the roll. Esquire McWhorter? Yes, ma'am. Esquire Lawrence? Yes, ma'am. Esquire Aldridge? Yes, ma'am. Esquire Lasley? Yes. Esquire Cummings? Yes, ma'am. Esquire Williams? Yes. Item 17 is approved resolution 2410 authorizing Warren County Emergency Management to make application for grant funds and upon approval to enter into an agreement with the Kentucky <coughs> Office of Homeland Security to execute any documents which are deemed necessary by the Office of Homeland Security to facilitate and administer the project and to act as the authorized correspondent for this project. Motion by Squire Lawrence, second by Squire Lasley. Discussion or questions? Please call the roll. Esquire McWhorter? Yes, ma'am. Esquire Lawrence? Yes, ma'am. Esquire Aldridge? Yes, ma'am. Esquire Lasley? Yes. Esquire Cummings? Yes, Esquire Williams? Yes. Item 18 is approved determination the amount of 25000 to Charles Taylor TPA for the county deductible in a liability claim. 
Motion by Squire Aldridge, second by Squire McWhorter. Discussion or questions? Please call roll. Esquire McWhorter. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Lawrence. Yes, Esquire Aldridge. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Bosley. <coughs> yes. Esquire Cummings. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Williams. Yes. Item 19 is approve emergency determination in the amount of $19,917 to REM Company for the purchase of three replacement dryers for the Warren County Regional Jail. This is related to the insurance claim from October 2023 and has already been processed by CACO. Motion by Squire Alders, second by Squire Cummings. It's good we'll finally get those uh, dryers in after that fire. Please call the roll. Esquire McWhorter. Yes, Esquire Lawrence. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Aldridge. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Lasley. Yes. Esquire Cummings. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Williams. Yes. Item 20 is approve the policy and procedure updates for the Warren County Regional Jail and approve remaining manual as written. Motion by Squire Aldridge, second by Squire Cummings. Any discussion? Please call roll. Esquire McWhorter. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Lawrence. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Aldridge. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Lasley. Yes. Esquire Cummings. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Williams. Yes. Item 21 is approved determination the amount of $34,496 to Lads Turf for the purchase of an ABI infield grooming machine for ball field maintenance for parks and rec. This is a single source vendor. Motion by Squire Aldridge, second by Squire McWhorter. Discussion or questions? Uh, I just, is this something that was in the budget, Chris, or is this something additional expense that was not anticipated or are we replacing a piece of equipment or? So what we've got is um, several years ago, we purchased eight Sam Pro Toro machines. So there's basically three ball field groomers out there on the market, Ventrac Toro, um, John Deere used to make a product, but you're paying for the green and the yellow. And then the, the ABI is out of Fort Wayne, Indiana. Um, the unit that we're trying to replace is we have two Sam Pro units that are eight years old. We've replaced the engine in those multiple times. They're having more functionality issues or need of additional engine replacement. They've met their lifespan. So instead of replacing those, those two units, this ABI is going to be utilized primarily at Michael Buchanan Park. That's going to allow us to shift another ABI to replace the other SAM Pro. Um, they basically have just aged out, and they, we've, we've used them until they're, they're no longer running. Um, so this money, uh, we believe we have the funds in the current budget through other appropriations to cover it. Um, however, we were going to put this into the fiscal year 24-25 budget, but we're trying to maintain 37 ball fields daily and we, we need it sooner mm -hmm. than July 1. Yeah. So we're going to try yeah. to cover it with what, what we have. Yeah. Thank you. We appreciate Chris's work. Good good question there. He always is trying to cut frack from something else, so we don't have to do that, uh, any budget amendments or whatever uh, on that. But, as, again, as everyone remembers, anything over $2,500 has to come for the court, so we appreciate the hard work on that, Chris, and making sure that works within your uh, ability. Any other questions? Please call the roll. Esquire McWhorter. Yes. Esquire Lawrence. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Aldridge. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Lasley. Yes. Esquire Cummings. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Williams. Yes. Item 22 is approved determination in the amount of $68,563.98 to Bluegrass Integrated Communications for required mailing of reapportionment notices by the County Board of Elections in compliance <coughs> with KRS 116.085, and this is the state's contracted vendor. Motion by Squire Lawrence, second by Squire Williams. Discussion or questions? I'm sorry to keep beating the drum, but is it something budget-wise? Is it something that we anticipated? Is it something that's going to be it's an, a requirement? An it's a state I know it's a requirement, but I'm saying, where's the money coming from? Is it is it something that we're taking on reserves, or or was it something in that their budget to start with? I, I didn't have this originally budgeted, but we do have the money within the budget to pay for it. Mm -hmm. If state makes us do it, we have to do it. So well, the, 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 again, just to, so everyone's clear on that, it's a good, good question. So when we had to do the reapportionment, <clears throat> which we're required to do for uh, all, all of the districts and everything that goes along with that, we are required then to notify every uh, household exactly what's going on. And uh, 68 grand, just a one-time fee to make sure it goes out, a little tough to swallow, but it is part of it, times 120 counties. I mean, I could I think you can also do the math on that too. A little, little uh, tough to swallow, but that is that is part of it. Any other questions? Please call the roll. Esquire McWhorter. Yes. Esquire Lawrence. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Aldridge. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Lasley. Yes. Esquire Cummings. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Williams. Yes. 
Item 23 is approved lowest and best bid from Bluegrass Landscape for the addition of locations to the Beautify I-65 project. Funding for this project will be paid for by Operation Pride. Four bids were solicited, two were received. This is the lowest and best bid. Motion by Squire McWhorter, second by Squire Aldridge. Discussion or questions? Please call roll. Esquire McWhorter. Yes, Esquire Lawrence. Yes, Esquire Aldridge. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Lasley. Yes. Esquire Cummings. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Williams. Yes. Item 24 is approved first reading of ordinance 2414 rezoning property located at 564 Old Greenville Road and portions of 490 and 516 Old Greenville Road from agriculture and residential estate to a rural residential and residential estate containing approximately 2.8987 acres and presently owned by Lewis Brown Estate, care of Belinda Yeckering and William and Loretta Byram. Motion, Motion by Squire Cummings. Second by Squire Aldridge. Discussion or questions? Please call the roll. Esquire McWhorter. Yes. Esquire Lawrence. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Aldridge. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Lasley. Yes. Esquire Cummings. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Williams. Yes. Item 25, approved first reading of Orange 2415, rezoning property located on a portion of the property at 1804 Mount Olivet Gherkin Road and a portion of the property at zero Mount Olivet Gherkin Road. Located approximately 1,470 feet southwest of Gherkin Road from agriculture to residential estate, containing approximately 9.609 acres and presently owned by Handy Homes LLC. Motion, Motion by Squire Lawrence, second by Squire Lasley. Discussion or questions? Please call the roll. Esquire McWhorter? Yes. Esquire Lawrence? Yes, Esquire Aldridge? Yes, ma'am. Esquire Lasley? Yes. Esquire Cummings? Yes, ma'am. Esquire Williams? Yes. Item 26, approve first reading of Ordinance 2416, authorizing a lighting agreement between Warren Rural Electric Cooperative Corporation and Covington Farms. Motion by Squire Aldridge, <coughs> second by Squire McWhorter. Discussion or questions? Please call the roll. Esquire McWhorter. Yes, Esquire Lawrence. Yes, Esquire Aldridge. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Lasley. Yes. Esquire Cummings. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Williams. Yes. Item 27 is approved order 2408, approving use of the alternate zoning procedure as outlined in the City County Planning Commission zoning ordinance. And before we have a uh, uh, motion on that, I'll, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about this, then we can ask Ben if there's any questions. Uh, I think you saw this. We've been working with the um, City County Planning Commission and our partners with the city to look at this. Uh, but I want to make sure everyone's on the same page as far as what is going to happen in the future if we approve this. Uh, the application and public input process is the same. So when you're going through plan all of nothing changes there with planning and zoning. The day after the planning commission meeting and votes, a report is then sent to fiscal court for anything that addresses the county. So we'll go to fiscal court. Uh, but the planning commission's decision then is final 21 days after that, unless a request is made for the fiscal court to hear the zoning change case. Uh, anyone can make that claim in that first uh, 21 days, they have to fill out a form. So if there's an issue, they st the pub general public and the applicants still have the opportunity to have that uh, heard here at fiscal court. But as you know, 95% of the applications through the planning commission have no opposition. And again, I think it's important for the public to understand uh, no one just shows up at planning and zoning and here's what they want to do. They have had months of, of meetings with the commission staff where they've said this will work, there's no way this will work. Here's the th they have modified everything they've had to do so that they can meet the requirements in planning and zoning. That is one of their jobs is to go through these developments to, to uh, explain that before it even comes to them for a vote to see about that. So, so that is why. 95% of the applications go by with no, applica no uh, opposition because they've done all the homework for the previous six months. Uh, and if there's no opposition, again, what that does, it speeds up the approval process by approximately 41 days. And I don't want, with the growth that we're having and things like this, there's no need for them to sit around for a first and second reading at fiscal court when they have been approved by planning and zoning with no opposition. That'll go through and they can begin all the processes they need to do for the infrastructure improvements, uh, the developments, the site work, all the things they're doing. It does shorten the, the, the time for doing that. And 
not publishing ordinances does save uh, the county money as well. And I think from a, a efficiency standpoint, which we all want to do as a government officials, uh, this makes the most sense. And that's why the city, if you'll see that they passed this the last week, this would, if we pass this, will go into effect April 1st. And this is uh, the, uh, this new alternate zoning uh, will be the way of the future for Warren County. Motion by Squire McWhorter, second by Squire Aldridge. Any questions for Ben? He, he got up and shaved and showered and everything to come over <laughs> here. Just right. trying to help you out a little bit, right? No. I think it's a great, uh, a great move for uh, the community, and it's a, uh, it's a more efficiency as well, so I'm always in favor of that. And the most important thing you mentioned there was these who are not happy with that zoning proposal they still have all the options and all the rights to come and and present it back to us <coughs> if they want to correct squire comes no, nothing nothing has changed we've had three today on our agenda and all passed and so i think it's a great move to for to help our county move forward but just want to reaffirm that anybody who's not happy with a decision and want to come back and they still have the right to come back to this body to to present their case on right. on whatever so they fill that form out it'll exactly right it will go on our agenda we'll have that opportunity for them to have a discussion mm -hmm. so the general public or citizens or whatever have lost no ability for them to address uh, elected officials about what is going on but again at the end of the day the greater majority of these uh, again today is it, I mean who there's there's so much uh, things that happen that are I would almost say non-controversial. It is just uh, factual. It has to be done. There's no opposition, and so we should speed that up to get those uh, developments going as well. Great. All right. Please call the roll. Esquire McWhorter. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Lawrence. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Aldridge. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Lasley. Yes. Esquire Cummings. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Williams. Yes. <coughs> Item 28 is approve the budget transfers for Warren County. Motion by Squire Aldridge. Second by Squire Lasley. Discussion or questions? Please call the roll. Esquire McWhorter. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Lawrence. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Aldridge. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Lasley. Yes. Esquire Cummings. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Williams. Yes. All right. Will the treasurer please report the claims? General fund six hundred fifty-nine thousand one hundred seventy-five dollars. Road fund seventy thousand nine hundred sixty-three dollars. Jail fund four hundred seventy-nine thousand seven hundred forty-six dollars. And stormwater fund twenty-nine thousand six hundred twenty-three dollars. You have to answer any questions. Motion to clear our bills. <sighs> Motion by Squire Cummings, second by Squire Aldridge. Please call the roll. Esquire McWhorter. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Lawrence. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Aldridge. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Lasley. Yes. Esquire Cummings. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Williams. Yes. Sheriff Hightower. Thank you, Judge. Just want to say a couple of things is uh Congratulations to Western Kentucky University. Last night they had a speaker there that uh, has a little bit of controversy around him and just the way that they were able to uh, plan and prepare for this. Jailer Harmon and I were both up there in the command center last night and all the other law enforcement agencies were there and uh, our community acted well and, and it just ended up being, um, you know, as good as you can, you can have in a situation like this. It wasn't in Memphis or some of the other places he's been. So, yep. so congratulations to them and, and, and their planning and preparation for that. Just want to say that. And I wanted to also thank um, Magistrate um, Aldridge here. Uh, he, he was kind enough to, to get with me back several months ago. And so I just want to show everybody this mm -hmm. is, so if you have a deputy working on the side of the road, you know, and sometimes they, they've got their vest on, we've seen how people drive here in Warren County. We're doing our best to, to help that. But, but you, have, you have this here. Yeah. Uh, that's pretty visible and uh it you you've got that and it, it, there's a magnet it'll actually be on so on the side of the road it just really helps with the safety of that and, and that came out of his own personal accounts that he gets from his his position here so just wanted to thank you publicly for that as well and, and several other of the deputies are, are very appreciative so but that's all i have judge i want that, to appreciate it that's and awesome everybody have a wonderful um easter weekend today. you too i'll holler at you right afterwards so it's good. yes sir yep that's good. All right. Hello, Lynette. Hello, we spoke about you moments ago. I know, I you purposely, I saw you in the hallway waiting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing, I'm playing. That's fine. So how are you doing?
Yes. It's over, and we can move on to boat season now. And I'd like to wish everyone a happy and safe holiday weekend um, on the behalf of the clerk's office. Thank you. Hey, Lynette, a quick question. How is our uh, license renewal stuff? Is that easing out a little bit, or are we still having You know, that part of it is hey, we hey. still have a... Mm -hmm. I do. Thank um, you. Sorry. Uh, that part is easing up a little bit. We are transfers. We're still having some problems, but I will say we were lucky enough last week to dig out of all of our dealer work. We had not been caught up in our dealer work since this started. Last week, one day last week, we did 522 titles, which is a, an unbelievable amount. But we had everybody was all on board, and we got that done, and we're caught up. So things are getting a little bit better, um, and the fact that we've got tomorrow off is even better. So thank you for all that. <laughs> hey, you're welcome. You take yes. those little wins. That's a win for us. And it's, it's been on the calendar for Good Friday, not just because of the 512 Andre, titles, yes. but, but congratulations. <laughs> right. I want to make we sure. We take it however we can get that's it. That's awesome. On that. yeah. they now, do, they're doing a great job. On Monday, I'm that's sure. right. They're doing a great job. I appreciate that. March is one of the busiest <laughs> months by far. And so that's been a lot of stress on them for everyone coming down here and, and that. And, and, you know, the beginning of the month. Um, I definitely was going out the back door because if I went down the front steps, there was 400 people there all looking at me like it was my fault. And I said, yeah. it's Lynette's fault. So don't blame us. <laughs> but they've done a great job. Thank you. And, and please tell all your staff. Thank you for all the Thank hard work. Thank you all. Yep. All right. Joshua Hardy. Morning, Everything good? Good to see you. Jailer Harmon. Thank you, Judge. Happy Easter. Happy good to Easter see you, you too. Yes. I was looking, you were in the back row, came up here and spoke, and you saved some steps. Chris Cummer. Yes, sir. Happy Easter to everybody. Um, just good news. Um, the Easter Bunny has shown up early at Michael Buchanan Park, and uh, we've got the coolest playground in southern Warren County being installed. It's going to be installed ahead of schedule. Uh, big thanks to Miracle Recreation. Big thanks to Brad for helping us yeah. with that grant, and it's going to give all those kids in southern Warren County a great place to play. So it should be online within the next several weeks, and then shortly, sometime probably Mayish, uh, we're going to be doing a sidewalk ourselves that connects the parking lot to the playground. So um, should be should be awesome, and we we expect uh, a lot of fun happening down there. Yeah, it's going to, going to be great. So it's a it's a great great uh, opportunity for us, and we do appreciate the grant. But that is a, a fantastic playground. We're really excited about. It, so all right, uh, I think Josh, oh, Nikki, you're not answering for him, but you're here. How are you? Everything good. Thank you. Hello, Holly. I see you on the Zoom. Good to see you. Everything good in your world? It is. That's great. Happy Thank Easter you. To Happy Easter to you too. Great to see you. Ronnie, oh, what's up, my man? Travis, how are you doing? Everything good with your world? Yes, sir. Thank All you. right, great to see you there. I see Tommy Loving in his office there. Tommy, everything going? Thank you. Happy Easter. Happy Easter too. Ben, thanks for coming. A lot of things going on. We do have some other uh, zoning issues we'll deal with in, in the coming months, and, but we appreciate the hard work that uh, you're doing there. James, everything going your way, I'm sure? That's great. A couple things I'll get to. Squire McWhorter. Just like to say happy Easter to everyone. Be safe. God bless you. Thank you, buddy. Squire Aldridge. Thank you, Judge. Again, just echo that. Happy Resurrection Sunday to everyone. Thank you for that. Squire Cummings. Continuing theme, I think the other thing I'll add to it is I would encourage everybody to attend your church of, of your choice this Sunday. It's a big day, and, and uh, you'll celebrate that. I also want to continue to pray for Chris and Coomer and Josh Moore and their mother and their, their care of that. So just want to continue to add them in our prayers every day. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Squire Williams. Hey, Judge, I'd like to uh, thank the, both the city and the uh, county's involvement yesterday, the, the uh, first responders, the many that uh, helped avert what could have been a disaster in this community. And it was great to see the cooperation between all the departments and the services. Um, so I, I really appreciate their, their hard work and what they, what they accomplished yesterday. 
Uh, also, I might remind everybody that uh, a lot of the there's going to be a lot of activity on the highways this next week as our school systems both go into spring break. Uh, we want to wish those that are making their way to a uh, different climate <laughs> for uh, for spring break happy travels and safe travels. Uh, so uh, be careful. We we want to see you back. And uh, then, as everyone else has said, uh, this is a special weekend, and, and I want to wish everyone a happy Easter. Thank you so much. Squire Lawrence? Yeah, Judge, I'd also like to commend our emergency personnel for showing up and help a great job they did at the, the fire we had yesterday. It was a good, could have been a massive emergency, and it was anyway, but it could have been just, you know, catastrophic. And they've done a great job, and that's the truth about that. I also want to wish everybody a, a happy Easter. And, and I'm also for letting Lynette and the rest of her staff off next Good Friday. If that's possible. <laughs> <laughs> next year, if we, can, if we can figure it out, I'd sure like to hear it. We need a motion on that. All right, Squire Lasley. Uh, I'd just like to take a minute. We spend a lot of time uh, highlighting a lot of the athletic accomplishments of uh, area teams. Uh, but, you know, there's a lot of uh, young people involved, a wide range of extracurriculars doing a great job. Uh, in particular, we just wrapped up uh, musical season, high school musicals. Hopefully people had an opportunity to take one or more of those in, uh, but they really do an outstanding job and put in a lot of time. And uh, mm -hmm. I uh, just encourage that uh, the more we get involved and support young people activities, the better it is for the community. Amen. Thanks. Amen to that. That's right. Mr. Treasurer. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. Sarah sitting in today, thank you. Great yes. input all day today. That's good. Happy to be here. <laughs> Keeps us straight. That's good. Thank you so much for that. Miss Clerk. Thank you, Judge. Yeah, fine. <laughs> thank you, too. Hello, Brian. Everything good? Thank you, Judge. Good. I just wanted to echo uh, the first responders yesterday. It was fantastic. Thank you all, everybody that joined in. Happy Easter to everybody. And Chris, do we have a timeline on that Michael Buchanan playground? Because we've been there three days this week already, fourth today, and every day my kids are checking out what's been erected uh, there. So uh, they're moving fast. We've got to put the surfacing in, um, so we've got to have some temperatures for that here, and then no rain, and so hopefully within the next two weeks it will be done, and we'll be out there playing. Great. We'll be uh there we go. I, I forgot to add one thing sure. that happened last week, and I don't want to go unnoticed, is that Plano Elementary and Alvaton Elementary Schools were uh, achieved the legacy status from the William Covey Foundation mm -hmm. for the Leader in Me program. Right. And to echo how, how much an accomplishment that is, is that there are only 21 in the whole country mm -hmm. legacy schools, and we have three here in Warren County. Right which speaks highly of our school systems and the teachers and everybody involved in that. But that's a, an amazing accomplishment for, for those two schools that were honored last week, and I was proud to be part of that. So That's great. Yes, sir. Thank you for going out there. It is, it is amazing. Uh, since you brought up, I, I, it drives him crazy when I say it, but I, I don't care. Joe and Sherry Natcher are the ones that brought that leader in me to, to uh, Bowling Green and Warren County. And when you think about uh, trying to make a generational difference, sometimes we want to do something that just affects something today. And they knew this would be long-term effects, but uh, when you see Joe or Sherry Natcher, or that entire Leader in Me program, that was uh, his initiative. He hates when I tell people that, but I'm telling everyone that uh, without his visionary leadership on that, wouldn't be here. It has transformed the youth of this community when you see a kid that has gone through that program, uh, they sure are different than I was when I was in fourth and fifth grade. Their ability to speak, how they do things, and how they understand things, that leader in me, the, the principles of that. And it is showing a big effect in our school, in our school systems uh, from everything from disciplinary things on down, but it's a great accomplishment for those schools to do that. So thank you for bringing that up, Ron. Yes, uh, to echo those comments, please be careful for spring break. For the people staying here, it's the greatest week of the year. Everyone can get out of town, so traffic's better. Mm -hmm. uh, but we do have a lot of people that uh, do that. I, I do want to compliment. Uh, one thing we find out about Bowling Green and uh, Warren County, which is uh, great, we continually work together. And emergency management and the jail staff and the sheriff 
and Western Police and the Bowling Green Police uh, all work together. This is not the way it is in many, many counties around the state, which is unfortunate. But because of that, they were able to handle things. We, we are proactive. Uh, our law enforcement meets quite a bit with emergency management, with, Jay, with all the affected people proactively to say, what can we do here? Because when we see things around the country, we are not go that is not what this community is about, and we're not going to have it here. And what it takes is committed people to get ahead of, ahead of the game, to say, how can we, again, free speech is, an, is a uh, very important thing, but how can we also have free speech on all sides but then do it in a civil way so we can be proud of what we are as a community. And I think the uh, efforts of the people that were down there yesterday did a great job. And then nothing like having a uh, explosion right beforehand and that fire, if you saw any video of that or whatever, it, that could have been a thousand times worse. And we had our first responders, of course, get to that, do all the things they need to do and take care of that right here in the middle of town. So. Um, so that, that was great, but we're always proud of what the, what the reaction is and what uh, the proaction is of our law enforcement and what they do on that. So thank you for all that hard work. Again, congratulations to uh, our toppers. It was in Indianapolis. It was a great, uh, great atmosphere, a great first half. A tough in that second half, especially for the Marquette fan that was right behind me that uh, <laughs> pray my way through that second half, uh, but it was good. So I, he, he was excited, so I, good for him. Uh, but they had a great season, and it's always exciting for Western. It does make a difference. I'm a big believer. Scott says that about the uh, youth of the uh, youth of that. It does make a difference in a community when you have any kind of uh, teams, whether it be the musicals, whether it be the debate team, whether it be sports teams. When they're doing well, people feel good about it, so it was a great, great thing there. Uh, Chris keeping your prayers for your mother and Josh Moore. Thank you for saying it earlier, but they've uh, uh, a lot of things, a lot of things going on and we appreciate your hard work and trying to juggle all that. And it's a, it's a burden, but we're, we're right there with you. Squire Alders, thanks for that uh, donation to the uh, Sheriff's Department. Those are very, very valuable. And so that was a great thing for you to do as, as, as far as that goes to. All right. And finally, just uh, hope everyone has a, a, a great weekend ahead. Uh, for this community, a safe weekend as well. And uh, we can always remember that he is risen. So with that, we have a motion by Squire Lawrence to adjourn. Second, and we are adjourned.